Okay, everybody. Sorry about that. We seem to have one or two little technical itches there. You all right, Tony? You yeah. ready to go again? Ready to go again. Yeah, take two. We'll have a little go of things. So we were just looking at before we uh, got cut off there about the Preston game and about Marcus Tavernier, and he came back in on the night and he showed one or two glimpses, but like you yeah. say, maybe not too much of a surprise that he hasn't featured as much this season so far. Yeah, like, like the, the first couple of times he got the ball against Preston, uh, he pretty much was playing a similar game to the few times that we've seen him, James, yeah. getting the ball and just giving it square. Yeah, yeah. And maybe he's got a call from the bench which I very much doubt, and uh, whether he's just took it on himself do you think to get the ball at his feet and drive forward. Yeah, do, and you, do you think it's going to be a confidence thing, Tony, then? That, or? Uh, you know what, James? When you're watching them now, you don't know whether they're getting too much information hmm. or not enough information. Yeah. And yeah, They're all a bit confused. Yeah, you, you don't know whether there's enough instructions going out there. You don't know what instructions are being sent out with. Yeah. Like you say, is it too much or... Isn't it enough? Yeah, and, and it's. I'm. I'm thinking. I'm thinking with our backroom staff. Mm-hmm. It, it could be obviously the the work and hard, and they all want to be successful. Yeah, I think they may be getting too much information and things are getting over complicated. Possibly, yeah, I think that's a fair point, Tony. I mean, I know tonight's show is probably going to provoke a lot of reaction from Borough fans because they're still hurting after the game on Friday. Yeah, which we'll get onto in a minute. Um, C three, thanks for watching, mate. Uh, when is it time to walk for Woodgate and we should be burying these teams I mean I don't know about there's any teams we should be burying this year in the championship I think it's going to be a difficult season for us against there's, whoever isn't it? there's one team worse than us at the moment in that league and that's Barnsley yeah I'd agree uh, Hull sorry Stoke and Huddersfield are okay. going to get out of it yeah I agree you know what I mean yeah yeah. Uh, Huddersfield looks like they've turned the corner now with yeah. is it Danny Coyne there, uh, new manager. yeah Cowley yeah the Cowley, Cowley brothers Cowley, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah you know the like you say, their track records. They they were bound to pick up, yeah, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. I mean, going back to the Preston game, uh, Tony, I mean, they maintained their record of scoring in every match this season when Harrop gave them the lead in the 40th minute. Yeah. And I must admit, I don't think I was alone. I'm sure you felt the same. You feared the worst when we went 1-0 down there. So yeah, yeah. Like, how crucial was it that we answered back straight away with the equaliser? Well, it's funny enough, when that goal went in, we, we'd been doing OK. Yeah. We yeah. hadn't threatened much. Yeah. But we'd been doing OK. Yeah. When it went in, I'm sat there. As soon as it went, we need to reply soon straight away. Yeah. Because you're looking at the clock. What forty forty one minutes? Yeah, it minutes. was. Yeah, yeah. We go in one nil down at half time. Yeah. We're not coming back, James. And yeah. like you say, fantastic goal off for us. It was. Well, now he's been given it. Only a couple of days later, he'll take all he can get. How, one how, of the lads. How he could? How they've given that goal to him? Cost. I don't. I, I know. You're, you were at that end of the ground. Did he actually touch it? I didn't see him touch it. I just seen the the lad. You know, bundle the ball yeah, over the yeah, line, but. Yeah. <laughs> the dubious goals commission have, have given it to Brit certainly a dubious one mate yeah, I'll give you that but he, like you say he's a striker he'll have it yeah, yeah. and again we're getting plenty of comments about the current situation at the club we'll come back to the Preston game in a minute uh, Daz's football stand Woody has no experience as manager uh, which could be the reason why we are losing games we've conceded seven goals in our last three games yeah. down the left hand side yeah right I'm very critical now at the moment of the Basher, Walker, all these strikers, better strikers. Yeah, He's a world-class striker. He was brought in to make them better. Leo's come in to do Woodgate's job, mm-hmm. to look after the back four. Yeah. And it's an absolute joke. You've got a goalkeeper, like you say, is it is you, from Uruguay, isn't he? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we don't know his background, mm-hmm. you know, his goalkeeping history. Yeah. I've never looked into it too much, but our back four, are absolutely atrocious. Yeah, Abs- and to be getting battered for teams to be doing the same thing week in week out. Yeah, why you can't see that from the bench? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Woodgate had the same back four last season. Mm-hmm. I know we're getting no protection at all of our midfield. No, we're not. No, absolutely nothing. But for you, shotting to be playing left back, mm-hmm. I'm not going to go into the Birmingham game yet. No, <laughs> uh, but we conceded again. Down the left, first, first time really, Preston done us down our left hand side. Yeah. And I think our backroom staff are absolutely atrocious mm-hmm. at the moment. Like you say, people are telling me to shut up. You know, Leo's full of passion. This, uh, If he's full of passion, go sit in the stand and shout with yeah. us. Uh, it's a fair point, Tony. You've got yeah. to separate passion from know how and knowledge. Yeah, yeah. 
You know what I mean? We're all passionate, but we're not sat on the bench. Yeah, no. He, he's sat on the bench. He's the man in charge of our back four. Yeah. And I hope Woodgate's going through him like a dose of sauce, because I bet when the back four never performed last season, Pulis was going through Woodgate like a dose of salt. Yeah, yeah. And for me, I, I don't know what Robbie Keane's bringing to the, you know, to the party because we're firing blanks again. My concern with that part, and uh, we'll talk on about it in the Birmingham game, is for me, is there just doesn't seem to be any connection to no. five minutes at no. all. It, it doesn't matter who's up front. If you get no supply or there's no connection between the midfield and him. There's absolutely nothing. There was nothing there and at all, was there? I think the time's come now. We're playing three in the midfield. Most teams are going four in the midfield. Mm. We're getting overrun. Yeah. Clayton's not doing his job. He's not screening the back four. No. You know what I mean? And oh, it's it's you know people don't like Roy Keane, but he speaks a lot of sense when he says, "If you don't sprint back to your the football type to add that vital experience, I think that's something that's definitely missing within the coaching staff." At for our Woodgate, club. the stay manager of our club, yeah. Gibson really has to have a look at something like that. He's got to have a look at bringing someone in who can guide him in the right direction, and. We don't want Woodgate sack. That's that's no. the last thing we want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're eleven games in now, and we're in, we're in it, we're in it up to our necks. Yeah. All I'll say, Tony, is Gibson took the steps when Brian Robson had been a manager for six years, not yeah. six months. Not Brian s- Robson yeah. had been a manager for six years, and he said, "There's something not quite right here. I'm bringing Terry Venables in." Now, I'm not saying Terry Venables is no. going to come in, but he could see something then, and he acted. Yeah. And that was with a manager who'd been a manager for six yeah. years. Yeah. And also had played football at the top level all yeah. through his career, captain England, and he said, "No, no he needs some support." Is a, yeah, one of the best players in the world, and he, like you say, he brought Venables yeah, in to yeah. help him. Is it now the time? I know it's very early on in Woodgate's managerial career, but does he need that person already now? I'm surprised it never happened at the start of the yeah. season, but yeah, he, he just needs someone in with a bit of guidance. Yeah, do you know what I mean? He, he's got to learn the ropes, which are put. Mm. You're only going to bring someone else in. You know, and the players that we have, yeah, yeah, he, he's, he's only going to have the same problems as yeah. Woodgate. Yeah, talking of players, I mean, Preston the other night, they started the game fifth in the league. Now they're third in the league, and I dare say maybe teams were surprised us being as high up in the league, having watched us last season, what yeah. we were like. But I must admit, at the end of the day, I was disappointed. We only took a point from that game yeah. uh, last Tuesday night. I wasn't overly impressed with them. And again, as we've said before, I think it highlights it in this league. The vast majority of the teams, there's not a great deal of difference no, between them, is no. there? The, the, like you say, they played nice football, but yeah. they didn't hurt us that much. No, no. Uh, I was disappointed we didn't come away with three points. Yeah. I thought they were there for the take. Yeah, I agree, mate. And I think it was just a case of steadying the ship after the Sheffield Definitely. Wednesday game, take the point of what we had. Yeah. And I, But I felt, and I think Woodgate felt, I felt we could have went and took the three points yeah. uh, against Preston, yeah. but... Can't disagree. The point but. was a good point. At the time it was, yeah. yeah, definitely. And there was a lot of discussion after the match as well, Tony, about the attendance. Um, it was under 18,000, which was the lowest for a league game at the Riverside for four and a half years since we played Millwall in 2015. Do you think things like that will concern the club or do you think they're expecting that this season? Oh, I, you know, I, it's heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. You know, just like you say, there's no better sight than the Riverside when it's, you know, packed to the rafters. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's, yeah, maybe it's they have thought that it's going to get worse. Yeah. And but he put the prices up, and people aren't going to come. Yeah. yeah. And it, it could get and even you know like you say we spoke the other week, James. We've been there when it's. <laughs> yes, yeah, park four, five, yeah. six thousand there regularly. Yeah. You know it doesn't take much. No. You only have to look at all these other clubs. You only have to look at all the empty seats in the championship. Yeah. To see how far. Clubs can fall from grace. Yeah. You look at Cardiff and Huddersfield now, their grounds were rocking last season, yeah. Premiership teams. Yeah. Now the, the fans just go. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. And, and like we've said before, we've touched on before things like the midweek games that are on the red button. Yeah. That hits the attendances. Yeah. Like you've said, prices and the fact that the form's not great so far this season, they are going to have a knock yeah. on effect with the attendances, yeah. aren't they? And just one thing about attendance before we move on, in fairness, at the weekend, the club had a full house there for the uh, yeah. Women's International. Yeah. Fair play to all the people that went to that game. But if the FA and England yeah. can do that for an international game to fill the house, why, why you know, we're season ticket holders, but mm. why can't the club or these clubs in the Championship do something similar, you know, just to get these grounds full? It must be something to do with the overheads, seat. mustn't it? Yeah. It's got to be the overheads. Looking at yeah. plastic seats, it's, it's so demoralising, you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, HTFC, Brad, thanks for watching. Obviously, Huddersfield Town fan. He's saying they're getting crowds of 20,000, which isn't bad. But I think a lot of that will be, obviously, fans that were there last the last two years yeah. of being Premier League. And they were probably hoping for a promotion push yeah. this year. Which uh, like Their expect expectations will be still quite high, like I was where yeah, under yeah, Gary Monk. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? And they're still going to go. Yeah. But if they don't go up, they'll see another drop off next season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mark Benson, thanks for watching, Mark. Two wins out of 12. He needs wins. What if he loses the next four games and they're going to be hard games against West Brom, Huddersfield, Fulham and Derby? <laughs> a tough match. The, the game I'm looking at there, which is absolutely massive now, is the Huddersfield game. And obviously Derby aren't you know, pulling up no trees at the moment. No. But that Huddersfield game... Unless they're driving cars. You know, yeah. Pulling up a few <laughs> trees. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wiping the captain out. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a game I'm looking at there and that's going to be massive if we get nothing against West Brom. Yeah. Totally, oh, and I think massive. Huddersfield maybe a month ago you would have thought, yeah, we can go there and turn them over. Now yeah. I'm not so sure. I think that's going to be a really tough yeah. game. I, I'm like you say, I'm, I'm of the feeling now of who oh, can we turn over? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? S yeah. Stoke went to Swansea on Saturday. Great win. Great win. Yeah. If they turn the corner, yeah, they didn't look too bad on the TV. I watched them the other week. Yeah, they played Forest at home on yeah, Friday and night. They yeah. didn't look too bad at no. all, but yeah, yeah. Phil Conway, great friend of the show. You all right there, Phil? Get the right players in and win games and the fans will come back. We're, we're saying get the right players in, but what are the right players now in the, under the current climate? There's a lot of chopping and changing yeah, going on, isn't it, at the minute as well? It's crazy. You, you see a lot of youth coming through. Now Birmingham City, them two kids. Yeah. There's a lot of youth club coming through in the, in the uh, even in the Premier League. Yeah. So what are the right players now? A club's sick of spending money mm. on Eastern Europe and European players, what, 15 to 30 million quid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know. Well, we're not certainly not in that. Uh, no, no. Shopping in them places anymore now, are we? No like you say, we paid 15 million quid for Britta Sombolonga. I've persevered, I've persevered. I thought he's a striker. He is a striker that's going to get you goals. And you see his stats come up mm -hmm. and he scored something like what? Something ridiculous like eight in the last 12 games, you think. Mm -hmm. But how many of them games? You're where saying where we've been getting beat 3 0, and he's come on and got yeah, a, a yeah. consolation. I goal. think he's scored in the championship in his whole career in the championship. It roughly translates about a goal in every three, three games, games. Which I think he has had a run uh, this this year, this calendar year, mm. where he's scored in so many games and he's mm. the best. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's, he had a little bit of a purple patch at the end of last season. Yeah, and didn't he had he, a yeah. decent run at the start of this season. Mm -hmm. So when I seen that stat, it was some of. You know, like he was the best. He was a top striker in the country in the calendar year from, mm -hmm. like you say, March or January, whenever it was. Mm -hmm. But for me, he's, he's not cutting the mustard. Right. Yeah. He's, at the moment, he always, look, as soon as his fist touch, you look like he's going to fall over. He's, There's criticism of his hold up plays and there and out, the, his general play outside yeah. the box. But for me, I, I, I feel a little bit sorry for him because I just feel as though if he was in the right team, in the right formation, and getting service, which I don't think he gets hardly really? anything at our club. Yeah, but when he does get the service, the two chances against Sheffield Wednesday. He did miss them, yeah. You know, yeah, I, get, I take that on board. I do take that on board. And I, you see Traore passing two balls into the net. Yeah, he well, yeah. He, over the yeah, hammer with him. No, he, he did do well yesterday. But again, I know people are getting excited about Traore today. About He had a great game against Man City, fair dues. But I think since he's been at um, Wolves, I mean, last year, I think he only started 10 games. Yeah, he's just... He's, he, he's just inconsistent, that lad. And yeah. when he's good, he's really good. Yeah. But th then, more often than not, he, he doesn't do enough for you, does he? No. So, I, I'm no. not so sure about Traore. But bringing it back to the Borough, mate. Uh, obviously, Friday night, Birmingham, unchanged start in 11. Uh, you took on a side who'd lost three on the spin before yeah. Friday night. Uh, but in the first 45 minutes, you wouldn't have believed that because that was as one-sided as you're going to see. They had a 16-year-old kid absolutely dictating the midfield. Yeah. I think I read somewhat where they had three number 10s playing. Yeah. Their, their squads are as, most probably as disjointed as ours. Yeah. And he's done his own. He's done the same as what Gary Monk done. But you, they don't even have to do the homework now. No, it's, it's pretty clear, it's, isn't it's it? It's pretty clear where our weaknesses are. Yeah. But they're avoidable weaknesses. Yeah. That, the first goal... Something happened similar, first couple of minutes, Randolph pulled off a worldie. Yeah. So, you know, the warning signs were there. Yeah. You know, the ball came in from a similar position, the lad hit it, and Randolph, how we managed to get to get that. Yeah. The amount of saves, shotting, fry again, threatening our own goal. 
I thought he had some like Toblerone boots on the other night, Dale Fry. Honestly, every time he I don't know what's up with Dale Fry, whether he's still not a hundred percent fit or But again it, it's gonna need... be difficult for him in coming into that side and the defence is chopping and changing yeah. every week, isn't it? Again, but uh, when when Woodgate first took the job, he stuck with that back four. Mm. He didn't chop and change. Yeah. But the last is it the last four games he's changed the back four. Yeah. Keeps changing it. Mm-hmm. First goal, Ryan Shotton decides to chase after the centre forwards and ends up stood beside <laughs> Dale Fry yeah. and Colin, of all the names for a football, <laughs> Colin just puts the ball in the box. Yeah. Can I be criti- Can I criticise Randolph for diving over it? I thought potentially he could have said, but you know what, there was more things that worried me about that goal, the fact there was a... Clayton lost a challenge on the halfway Clayton line. lost a challenge, yeah. yeah. Clayton lost a challenge on the halfway line. Yeah. Housen's on the left-hand side, and both of them are jogging back to the goal. That's what upset me about the goal. The lad Clayton's the got in the habit of doing that now. Yeah, yeah. Every time yeah. he loses possession, there's no effort to sprint yeah. and get yeah. back. Yeah. His shoulders are up, and that stupid little jog that he does, and he's not even getting back in position because yeah. we're getting done. Uh, you know, it worries me, Tony, and I'm with you on that. The fact that the lad that won the ball and then knocked it forward, he left Clayton for dead. Housen wasn't there, and then he went past McNair as well. And I'm like thinking, it's alright people saying, oh, I pass people on to so and so for them yeah. to pick them up the map. No one's passing anyone, well, the they're guy, just passing it on for no the, one else. The guy on Sky said it was down to Marcus Brown that goal. It's not down to Marcus Brown. What it's down to is that our coaching staff, we were getting absolutely hammered down our right From hand, the opening five. Down their right hand side, yeah. down the left hand side, our, yeah. le- our left hand side defensively. Yeah. Why didn't one of them just tell either Brown or someone to sit in mm-hmm. for the first 20, 30 minutes, yeah. consolidate till we got our heads above water? But Do they just persisted on watching and watching. And for a fan... Mm, it's frustrating, isn't it? We, can, we <laughs> know exactly where Birmingham City are going to play yeah. the ball. Out, and yeah. they sat over there and not one of them attempted, yeah. you know... To, to do something about it you know you, you can't blame Marcus Brown if he's a sorry is it, is it Marcus yeah, Brown yeah, Mrs yeah. Brown's boy yeah I always call <laughs> do you think they are getting the messages though from the coaching staff and they're just for whatever reason not following those instructions through or do you think it, the coaching staff aren't telling them anything I've had just... messages off away fans of, you know Barnsley Wolves yeah. places like that and I would look into them now it, it doesn't look like it to me but these fans are saying it looks like the players aren't playing for Woodgate Right now, these are fans from Wolves, but not from yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can see the point of view. You know what I mean? Because there just doesn't look to be absolutely anything. Mm. We're not winning a second ball. We're allowing teams, and I think we spoke about with allowing teams just to throw the ball into our box. Oh well, that's only I think we've mentioned this for all the last three weeks in yeah. a row about crosses coming in yeah. again. It came back and haunted us right at the end of the game. But why is Britta Sombolonga? Yeah, right. On the edge of our box in the last knockings of the game, yeah. one on one. Yeah, yeah. And then I think it was Housen again, just jogging back. No one attempted to come out to double up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which... And they, they just. And then, so if they're marking the middle of the goal, why is no one picking this kid up yeah. at the back post? Yeah. Well, I think, again, when you looked at it. Why is Randolph punt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just left exposed. But I mean, that was at the end of the game. We'll have a chat about that in a minute as well. Matthew Groves always uh, a good contributor to the show. I just don't get why Woodgate changed everything before the Cardiff game when we were four unbeaten. Uh, he changed it when we don't have to, and it's all gone belly up a bit. Uh, but do you think that's just inevitable with the size of squad we've got? And maybe you can't. I don't know if you can keep your team unchanged. I mean, we kept an unchanged side the other night at Birmingham. Yeah. Didn't work, did it? No. You- um, the, like you say, these these lads have been playing two, three times a week, yeah. and you can't expect it of no, them now, especially no. the the pace of the game. I know I was I don't show much pace or work rate or anything at the moment, but you you can't keep expecting them to do it. No, but we are missing Aidan Flint because you know what I mean. His physical presence in our back four has has left us totally exposed. Now he's gone. Yeah, you know he never brought much more, but at least he was physical, and he won a he won his fair amount yeah. when he was playing at the back. And now we we've, we've got absolutely nothing. Yeah, there's a good uh, question there from David Jackson talking to managers and Jonathan Woodgate, a former teammate of his, both at uh, Leeds and Newcastle. Lee Boyer comparing how he started this season as a manager at Charlton. Uh, yeah. 
to how Jonathan Woodgate's doing. Now, in fairness, at the start of the season, our tip chart was probable relegation yeah. candidate. Yeah, they're doing really well at the moment, aren't they? But Bullion's in the similar position to the guy at Sheffield United. Chris Wilder. Chris Wilder. He's come up, you know what I mean? He's brought, He's brought them, them up. up, yeah. They've got momentum. They've got momentum yeah. and they're bringing that into the championship now. You know what I mean? So, he, he just hasn't started this season. He, what did he take over? February, March last season. Mm. So, you know, he, at least he's had he's had a full pre season. Yeah, he, he knew the players he was taking over. Yeah, I know Woodgate's worked with him, but not he's worked him as, with him as a mate, but he yeah. hasn't worked with him as the manager. Yeah, so I mean, like you said there, no exaggeration to say that without Darren Randolph, we could have been about three or four nil down yeah. at half time, and that wouldn't have been unjust either, yeah. would it? And uh, and he made a few mistakes. He did, yeah. He dropped a few blobs on yeah. uh, Friday night. Yeah, he was at fault for me for the second goal. For once, he decided to come for a corner. Punch yes, the punch be fine. Yeah, he could have done better with that. He could have caught better. it. Yeah, mean, yeah, so yeah, yeah. But you know what? It, it, I think it's only human. I mean, he had an outstanding season. He's been he's been outstanding for, since he's came to the club yeah. for me. Uh, and it must be in a way disheartening for him when he maybe is looking at what's in front of him at the moment and thinking, Do you know what? I mean, yeah, I'm pulling my puddings out more or less every week for this team. Yeah, and where where it's, are we going? Like you say, if he goes in January, thank you very much, Darren Randolph. You've been yeah, you absolutely can. fantastic, yeah. sir. Yeah. If anyone deserves to go, and we, we can't have no gripe about, is Darren Randolph. Yeah. I don't yeah. want, like you say, he's the last player at the moment we want to leave. Yeah, definitely. But is he going to hang about if we're in the bottom three? Yeah, and he's got like an international maybe tournament to play in next summer next and stuff summer. like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you don't know, mate. At least on Friday night, the second half was a little bit better. There was an improvement. Um, and I think that came along when... Lewis Wing and Ashley Fletcher were introduced for yeah. Adam Clayton and Marcus Brown. Although we saw more of the ball, again, there was very few opportunities. There's no penetration, um, there? There's I mean, they had 26 shots, didn't they, Birmingham? Yeah. We had five. I yeah. mean, that illustrates the point, doesn't yeah. it? Uh, I was talking the other day about, like you say, when after this international break, he, he's got to have a look. He's got to have a look at trying a 4 4 2 for me because I think that's right. where. The lack of chances are coming from James. We've got absolutely no cover in the midfield. At the moment, we're not winning second ball. Lewis Wing's very deep. Mm -hmm. He's not like he's not the same player as he was last season. Who was pinging the ball all over, taking shots. It, he's he's too far away from yeah. the goal, and he, he's having no impact on the game. Would you be tempted then, maybe? I know you've said go four four two, um, and Borry, you said there the change to four four two was better, but no end product at the end of the day. Or would you be maybe tempted to go three centre halves and play five at the back, three in midfield? I read that Eric Paler and the, what he was saying is our three best players are shot in Ayala and Dale Fry. Mm. Uh, I think we set up like that against uh, Preston. Yeah. Was it? Oh no, you shot in his left back. Yeah. So one of the games we'd, we'd set up with the three of them at the back. Which I totally get. If the if they're three of our best players, play, you your play them. Play them. Yeah. But I, I think Shotton's confidence is. Well, I don't think it's really, a, it really doesn't help for me that he's playing left back and I left think back, right it, back, it, centre yeah, half. He, it, he's, he's all over it's the shot. Needs must. I, I think if you're going to play Ryan Shotton, he's got to play as a centre half for me. That that's his position. Play him there. I know he has his limitations. I'll never knock him for his commitment because no. I think he does, like you say, yeah. he'll play anywhere across that back line and he'll, yeah. he'll try and do the best that he can. Uh, but I think you're not doing him any favours by putting him on either the left, certainly not left back. No. Um, and I just thought he was just totally exposed the other Expo night. It was, like you say, he was exposed Preston yeah. and Birmingham yeah. City just yeah. totally tortured him. Yeah, no, I totally Like you say, that, that kid in the midfield for the likes of Clayton Bellingham. to yeah. be stood facing a 16-year-old kid, a seasoned pro, Letting him, you know, boss the game mm. the way he did. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he's not covering himself in glory anymore, Clayton. And it's been a few years now, and the sniping and the backstabbings, it's just getting louder and louder every yeah. game with him. I, I mean, I, I've, he's been a great servant for the club, Adam Clayton, don't get me wrong. And it's only a few weeks ago I was singing his praises on this show after yeah, the game we against Reading. And, and, and he it, said he had a good he game. He had a really yeah. good game that day, but yeah, he. he he found it going, but like I say, he wasn't the only one that found it difficult the other night. I thought Johnny Housen was more or less anonymous, but whether that's because he's just coming back from a operation, I mean, I was amazed he got through the yeah. game against Preston to then ask him to play less see, than 72 hours yeah, later. See, there's, there's another problem we've got. When Coulson and Housen were playing full-back, mm. we were at our most attacking. Yeah. 
Housen's come back into the midfield and done absolutely nothing yeah. against Preston and Birmingham City. Yeah, I think so. The question is, after the international break, if you've got friend fit, Coulson, Coulson fit, yeah, where do we go? Yeah. Do we go for the grittiness which Woodgate's on about? Do we go with friend Ayala, Fry, Fry. and shot and right back? Yeah, or do we go back to Housen and Coulson? And go back that way, do you know what I mean? And you know, we wear more of attacking threat. Yeah. I don't want Johnny Housen as a right back at Middlesbrough. Right, you'd rather have him I, in the I want him in the, in the midfield. I know he's getting older, but the box to box player that we've seen at Norwich and Leeds, but we haven't seen that at the Borough. I don't, I don't know if we're going to see that no, here, mate. No, I really, so I, I really if don't. that's the case, he needs to be our right back yeah, because he sees yeah. a lot more of the ball. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he's just adds a bit of solidity to the team there yeah, as well. Yeah. Um. So I think. Personally, I think that's where he might play for the West Brom game. I think he'll be yeah, there. Well, and, and where would you go with the left back, Coulson or Friend? If Coulson's fit, I think I, I don't fit. think Friend will be ready, so I think he'll go Coulson for that game yeah. against West Brom. Um, and I think he will play three centre halves against them because I think a lot of their threat is going forward. Yeah. Um, and I think that's just how we'll go that day. But, um, I mean, we nearly burgled an absolute fortune a point there the other night when Ayala bundled in that yeah. goal, but. Even then, Tony, we know now we couldn't even see out the last five minutes. No, there, could which, we? Uh, don't get me wrong, we deserved absolutely. We nothing, didn't deserve anything. No. Nothing, but to to get a lifeline like that, it took a a load of pressure off Woodgate because he could have come back. We've came away with a point. Yeah, we've been absolutely dreadful, but we managed to scrape a point. Yeah, and to see his face when that goal went in. Uh, well, you could totally, just read it, couldn't you, what he was totally, thinking? Yeah, yeah, totally inept. Totally yeah. inept to yeah. leave a sombre longer. Right, we're packing our box. We're packing our <laughs> box. Everyone right. was in the box, weren't they? Every week, every week we pack our box yeah. for free kicks and corners. We've got the worst record on free kicks and corners this season. So why are we still dragging our two centre forwards back into the box? Yeah. To so invite they, them to bring more so men forward. Why yeah. don't we clear the box out? Yeah. Give our goalkeeper a better chance to see the ball. Leave two up front. That takes three or four of their players away. Yeah. And you, you know what I mean. It's not as congested. Yeah. But to see Brit stood there, one on one with a guy who was going to lob it into the box, mm-hmm. and no one to come out because the guy had his head down. He, he had that ball at his feet for yeah, a while yeah. before yeah, he yeah, crossed yeah, it yeah. into the yeah, box. Yeah. Nobody to come out and double up. Yeah. And, and Brit, then someone Brit, who's totally free at the back Brit post. just to lift his leg up yeah, and then, yeah. you know, for it to float the back post and most probably the smallest lad on the pitch. It's great, yeah. To, to, you know, and one uh, header at the back and post. And like you say, Tony, we don't do ourselves favours and that we keep letting crosses come in. Another feature of the game on Friday, and we've seen it in a lot of matches this season, is the amount of free kicks we give away. Like, not far from our penalty area. You just keep inviting pressure on yourself all the time. And it's just that like, was a problem last season as it well. It was, it was. We, yeah. we, we give so many silly free kicks away. In and around our box, yeah, we allow players to pass it across our box, yeah, and the passing of the ball, which we allow, mm-hmm. we don't see that since since Pulis has been here, we don't seem to get a foothold in the game till at least the tenth or the fifteenth minute, mm-hmm. because teams just seem to pass the ball in front of our back four, which is dangerous, and we're giving away that free kicks, yeah, and we're giving teams so many opportunities to put the ball in the box, mm-hmm. and. At this moment in time, we don't know how to deal with it. No, no that's a fair point. That, that's our weak point, isn't it? It's yeah. our Achilles heel. I mean, the last four games, um, for me, what concerns me, Tony, is we've seen three really substandard performances. And you keep saying, can't get any worse. This is the low point of the season. People were saying after Sheffield Wednesday last week, they weren't great at Cardiff. Apparently, that was abysmal. They didn't yeah. go, but it was abysmal. Sheffield Wednesday was a horror show. And then you get that on Friday night yeah. at Birmingham. That's so that. what do you put this down to, Tony? It's got to go down to where. Uh, is it down to one thing or one person or is it down to a it's whole collectively, combination? It's collectively yeah. they're all as guilty as each other. Yeah. But we all know where the book lands. We all know where it stops at. And it's at Woodgate's doorstep. Does it stop with Woodgate though? Do you think it even goes even maybe further than that? Yeah, but we can't... If Steve Gibson had a boss, yeah, right. if Steve Gibson had a boss, there was someone above Steve Gibson at the club, the way he's run that club over the last 10 years... Would the bloke above him say it's acceptable? Would he have got rid of him? There'd certainly be questions asked, but yeah. I don't think Steve Gibson would say I haven't made mistakes because he has made mistakes, yeah. but so everybody does make mistakes in football. You know what I mean? yeah. So, yeah, it goes deeper yeah. and further than Woodgate. But yeah. Woodgate's the man who's put himself in the firing line. True. 
I don't think anybody on this show wants Woodgate sacked. No. But them four per- three out of four performances are down to him. There is players. He's openly come out on radio and TV and criticised them. He's criticised the commitment by saying how they're putting the effort in. The, is the confidence knocked? He tried to be, you know, reverse it round by saying, "Is it confidence?" Yeah. He's criticised his players. He's pretty much said they don't work as hard as what he does. He's got to stop talking like a fan. He's got to stop saying, "I'm a local lad. I'm from the area." He's got to come out now as a borough manager. Do you think his comments are how are an indica- indication of how frustrated he is though with those players? Because I mean, we're frustrated as fans with the results and some of the performances. And yes, he sends them out with instructions, but he must be maybe thinking if he is saying, right, I'm telling him to do these things. I'm going on about them to close these crosses down. And yet these things are still happening game after game after game. Do you think that's just an indication well, if, of how frustrated he is? If that's the is? case, if he's, he's got them all week and that's his game plan, mm-hmm. and he's telling them to double up, to close players down, it's, it's the players who aren't given 100% yeah. for Woodgate. And, yeah. I, and that's what he's been saying in the last two interviews. Yeah. The interview we give on Sky with that lady... Oh, that, that was, was an brutal. interesting interview, that, because that I was wasn't expecting that. I, was, I felt so awkward listening yeah. to that. And I, I mean, do you know what? I thought, in fairness, he handled it quite well, because yeah, I think he'd have probably come yeah. out of that dressing room raging yeah. from the performance. He, he, and the question she was answering, asking him... What else know, do you fear for your st- job? St- 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 she didn't talk about the game. She shouldn't have been asking him the questions that she was asking him. But I was surprised. I that, got yeah. the impression, and Woodgate must have thought, have you heard some of I haven't? Yeah. Because when she's saying, look, it's the international break, you know what normally happens yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. And he, he must, straight away I'm thinking, if somebody was saying that to me, have you heard something? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he handled it well, and it was a brutal line of question, yeah, which the, the lad had to go through, and it was really, if it was uncomfortable for a fan to watch, it must have been uncomfortable for him Certainly. to stand there. But he, like you say, he handled it well, but, you know, He's got the man up now. Yeah. He's got the man up and he's got the start. He's got to start delivering results. I think it's okay maybe saying, um, I'm passionate and I want this and I it's, want it's that. It's starting to wash, yeah, and, um, starting to wash off that Yeah, now. We, we need the results, don't we? We need a manager who's going to say, look, we're not in a relegation fight. I will put this right. Not like, I'm going to roll my sleeves up and I hope they're going to roll the sleeves up. Yeah, yeah. He, he's got to come out. They've all got to be singing from the same hymn sheet now yeah. because... The book's getting passed now, and that, that's always a bad sign. Yeah, that's And a it's a bad sign thing. when a manager comes on TV and radio and criticises his players. Yeah. And I honestly do fear we could be looking for a manager again shortly, but it, it's not going to solve the problems that we've got because no. we've got players now in we'll our squad who aren't giving it 100% yeah. for whoever is the yeah, manager. Yeah, well, that's a good point, Tony. Uh, there's a lot of finger pointing going here. Matthew Groves. Borough Rich, Iron River Skate, all saying about the recruitment team, saying that a lot of our problems stem from the recruitment team uh, and buying players that have been on overinflated egos and prices who don't deliver and ultimately players who don't play for the shirt. And I think that that's a big concern for me in a way is that we've got a lot of players at the, at the moment in the club who are in the final year of their contract so whatever happens at the end of this season, yeah, they ain't going to be here next no. year because they're not going to get offered contracts similar no. to what they're on now. Definitely. So are their hearts in it? Are they really going to sort of produce the performances we need and the new manager needs? Usually with players like that to start the perform in January, mm-hmm. don't they, the, you know, yeah. to, to attract... The old Mark for doing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they've never ever covered themselves in glory, mm-hmm. our recruitment team, and no. Bowser since he's come in. Uh, Adrian Bevan, is it Bevan? Bevington. Bevington. Uh, they just don't. They've got no communication at all with the fans. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I watched Bevington come in the other week against Preston, and they're deliberately going out of the way now. Bowser's always got his phone to his ear. He doesn't want to interact with none of the fans. They get out the car and they walk in the ground. You know what I mean? And yeah, they sold the club to a sombre longer brave weight and they brought all them players in, but they dangled the golden carrot to them, the massive mm-hmm. contract, yeah, yeah. and players came in. I don't think you can criticise them too much this season for the recruitment. Uh, obviously, they've been involved. Well, there hasn't in, been much, as there's only no, four players come in, haven't there? And so the four already, players yeah. that's come in is players that, obviously, Woodgate said he's been following, mm-hmm. which, yeah, you know, if he's following players like that because... 
Not one of them signings to cover themselves in glory yet. No, they're, they're taking time to settle Dick, in, aren't they? Dick Steele. Uh, Dyke Steele, yeah. Bowler. Brown. They're not cutting the mustard. Yeah. Brown. Mahayasum's not featured at all, has he? No. And it's... It's... Uh, it's concerning, yeah. but... The hands have been tied this yeah. last transfer yeah. window, so you, you Bowser and that, the, you know... Yeah. Criticise the hell out of them, but... N- not for this transfer window right. because obviously the cloth's been cut. Yeah, David Jackson uh, suggesting that we're a bit too relaxed here. Uh, we're awful at the minute, and unless something remarkable changes, relegation looks very likely. Do you think it looks very likely, or do you think it's just too early yet to predict? I think I totally agree. I don't know about we all look relaxed. It's. I think we're I, concerned. I'm not relaxed. I'm we're very concerned. very concerned about yeah, yeah. where we are at the moment because yeah. you've looked at other clubs. What's happened to them? And we're going down a similar road. We're going down a similar road as Knox Forest, Sunderland. There's so many clubs and clubs that I would say that are bigger than us that have gone down South to third tier. Ipswich yeah. last year, yeah. Blackburn did it a few yeah. years ago. Leeds, um, Leeds went down to third tier. Yeah, it happens, it happens. I think we're on that slippery slope at the moment, and I think the best option we have at the moment is for Gibson to bring someone in to put his arm around Woodgate and just, you know, advise him, advise him mm-hmm. the what's and the what not. Yeah. Because imagine having to bring a, an Allardyce in. Imagine how much that's going to cost Gibson. Yeah. It, it's all, well, this is what he should have maybe done. If he was yeah. going to go down that route, he should have gone down that route in the summer, not now yeah. to then give Woodgate the job and then move him on and get rid of him because it's probably going to cost you three times as much to do that now. Yeah. And you're also then going to have to replace Woodgate yeah. and his coaching staff. So I think you've made your bed now. You've got to lie in it, haven't yeah. you? Yeah, our, our coaching staff for me is a joke. Right. You know what I mean? I have no confidence at all with the people behind Woodgate. Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. I've always had a problem with Keane. Right. Because for him to come to our club and to think about it, you know what I mean? I'll I'll give you an answer eventually. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to come, you come. Yeah. I had this conversation with a guy the other night. I bet you Leo didn't think twice about no, it. No, no, no. <laughs> you no. know what I mean? Yeah, Leo, do yeah. you want the Yeah. Yeah, I'll be there tomorrow. Yeah. I'll be there yesterday. Yeah. But for me, Leo might as well go sit in the south stand. Do you, you think that's that's how I feel yeah, at the moment? Yeah, and that's it. I think it, until the results do change and you see evidence of things on the pitch it's going to take a while because you're trying to change the whole philosophy and out, outlook of a team on the pitch but until those things change these are, accusations are going to be levelled at the coaching but staff that, that, that philosophy now is just it's up in the air isn't yeah, it yeah the, 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 uh, they're just dead words now because that philosophy was dreamland it was dreamland you don't think it was achievable game. at all no 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 like you say first game of the season and everyone's up for it Luton are up for it, and it, it, it made for a great game. Yeah, yeah. It was their first game back in the championship. Yeah. Our first game under Woodgate, it was exciting, it was entertaining mm-hmm. for both sets of supporters. Yeah. First half against Brentford, absolutely fantastic, but then Brentford sorted themselves out, mm-hmm. stopped that press, Yeah. and teams have just sorted us out yeah, since yeah, then. We got yeah. a good result at Bristol City, yeah. who were flying at the time, yeah. but... That, that's it. Yeah, in no, eleven games. Point. I mean, we've yet to really meet someone in Wildwood class as top opposition yet in this league Which this year. Is scary. So no Fulham, uh, no West Brom, no fifth bottom. Um, I think we all recognise it was going to be a difficult season and a season of transition. But did you expect it to be as difficult as it's turning out? No, mm. no. I, I thought Woodgate had come in and re-energise these players. Mm. Uh, I thought we'd start to see a hell of a lot more a Brit. I thought we'd see a hell of a lot more than Fletcher. I thought Lewis Wing would be in his element in this system. Uh, obviously, Tav, but we've very rarely seen him. Yeah, We've seen none of the youth that he spoke about. Walker's had little five-minute yeah. cameos here and there. Like I mean. you say, the, the two lads, Brown and Bowler, both young lads, mm. but they've brought nothing to the table. Yeah, yeah. Nothing Dick Steele. <laughs> he looked a little bit like a, a rabbit in the headlights. Other night. I, uh, I felt for the poor lad because I just thought he looked... As yeah. though he's desperately lacking confidence and it can't yeah. be easy in a team that's struggling. He must be sick as a pig coming yeah. from a team like Charlton. Who <laughs> and seeing how they're doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's Thinking he's point. coming to some of better. Yeah. And yeah. Hopefully it will work out in the end. That's what we're all hoping for. But so yeah, our recruitment tough. team are doing a decent <laughs> job. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? If you can yeah. convince someone to come. Yeah. You put like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Borough Youth, he said he expected a mid-table season this year. I think 
I'd have been delighted with a mid-table finish this year, if I'm being honest, Tony. But uh, is, is that what we're fans against setting our expectations too high? I don't know because it, in a way it sort of hurt me to think at the start of the season That's we've got to be nowhere yeah. we've got to be nowhere near challenging for yeah. promotion. So I'm like thinking we're not talking about the Premier League here. We're talking about the Championship, yeah. and it's like should we not be aiming for a top ten finish or try to get to the top six? But I think we all sort of knew deep down there's no way we're going to be near that this year. No. But then now to all of a sudden, eleven games later, to be thinking, and I'll be but honest, you, you're thinking that. It, in your head, yeah, but in your heart, you're still thinking, we can, I, I, I yeah, we're, we're, we're right, yeah. Well, I'll be honest, I am now, and I, I was doing it on Saturday, I was at a game on Saturday, and I was checking the scores of like Barnsley, Luton, yeah, um, and that's how we're Wigan, and, Reading, and, and that's, that's what I'm looking at, now. Games. and that's what I'm looking at now. When I'm hoping those teams are yeah. starting to get beat, I'm not looking at Leeds or West Brom or Fulham, no. forget about them, yeah, I'm looking at them sort of teams, yeah. And, that, and that, that's, that is that's a, concern, a bad sign as a fan, yeah, yeah, because when you start looking at the results at the other end. Obviously, we're down there. Yeah, that's and it. That, what are we now? Fourth from bottom? Fifth bottom. Fifth 20th, bottom. 20th, fifth bottom, mate, yeah. Which is hard to take, but it's understandable that's where, that's why we're there. At, yeah. So, in terms of where we are in the league, what do we have to do to put things right on the pitch? What do the, those players have to do? Oh, and what do know. the coaching staff have to do Monday to Friday before a game? What do they have to do to get it a turnaround or some sort of response or reaction? He's got no one in the squad to replace some of these players. Mm-hmm. Clayton's going to play. You know what I mean? And someone's got to get hold of Clayton. And it, oh, do you it, think he will play? Do you think he might replace him with say, someone like Savile against West Brom? Well, th- th- there's a forgotten player. Yeah. I've totally forgotten. But that, maybe he's, that's our option. Because yeah. for me, Clayton's lost all interest. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He's a professional footballer. You can't say that about a professional footballer. But... He's not doing it. He's not he, doing it he's for the manager. He's going to a patch at the minute. Isn't he? You know, he's yeah. going. So, yeah, George Savile. He's got to find uh, getting some new life into it. Yeah. And he's got a fortnight now to either try to get the confidence back up or find someone in that new setup mm-hmm. that's going to breathe, you know, bring breathe new life into our season because yeah. it's all dead wood. It's, yeah. It's all. It's difficult at the it's minute. It's also. Isn't it, yeah. It's also predictable when we've got the ball and it's also predictable when we haven't got the ball because we know it's going to come in from the right, our left, and they're going to score. Yeah, yeah. Borough Rich is saying, on paper, I thought we had a much superior side to where we are in the league, uh, like the Mowbray days. Um, yeah. Our side does look, you know, on compared, paper. Which, we, which we've said since Monk, you know, still a lot of Gary Monk's players in that squad. Yeah. Since Monk's put most of that squad together, you know, it's always looked good on paper because of the price tags next yeah. to the players. That doesn't, that doesn't that tell doesn't you the full story, nothing, does it? No. Yeah. So, then Matty Groves again there. We haven't seen the Millwall Savile yet. It's so disappointing. Why do we, if we do do this, we buy players and then we never see the best of them or what they produce at other We started clubs. to see the best of him last year. Was he playing left back? He did play left back for a yeah, spell. Yeah, we've yeah. seen the best of him. We yeah. started to see flashes of the Savile from Millwall yeah. last season. Yeah. And Dave, by the way, there's mentioned about going and getting Ben Gibson on loan. I'm not sure if centre half's an issue for us. I, I don't know if we need for all Ben Gibson's a good player, and I'm sure he'd do a good job, but I don't know if we need any more centre halves. I think we've got would, problems. Like you say, it's all like us as fans thinking it's so easy to go, oh, let's go get Ben Gibson. How do we know Ben Gibson wants to come back there's here? There's that, there's the wages, yeah, isn't there? Wages know, is an it, issue. It's, it's a, we all talk about we all do it, we're all guilty of it. Well, why don't we go and get so and so? Someone said last week on social media, why don't we look at all these players out of contract? That's, you know... Still have to you, pay them, don't you? But <laughs> why do we want to bring players in that no one else wants? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still have to pay that's, them. Yeah, that's the reason why they're on that, you know, they haven't got clubs. Yeah. Because no one wants them. I think the and only... there's a reason why no one wants them. Yeah. So... I think the only way we'll spend any substan- substantial sort of money, Tony, in January is if we either sell uh, Randolph or Sombra Longer or Fry. Fry or maybe Wing. Yeah. If some of them go, then we might spend a little bit. We won't spend what yeah. we bring in because it'll still go towards covering costs for other things. But I don't expect us to spend a lot of money in uh, January. I really don't. Um, Iron River Skates mentioned there. We forgot to mention this man the other night. Rudy Gastetti came on. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Um, Gastetti came on and done the job that he was brought on to do for yeah, once. He looked like the Rudy Gastetti that I remember watching yeah. at Blackburn yeah. four or five years ago. He, he got involved. He won flick on. Yeah. He seemed to create a little bit of panic. He normally creates panic amongst our fans, I think, yeah. but he created panic amongst Birmingham City the other night. And 
maybe he does have a part to Brought play. Brought to a different... With, yeah. with Gestead, Woodgate said at the start of the season, you know, like he's been on the naughty step for ages, yeah. you know what I mean? And we've had the discussion. He's been, you know, he's been out, out the fold for too long. Mm-hmm. Uh, Britt and Fletcher are going to be at it hammer and tongs week yeah. in, week out, two or three times a week. So when Gestead's fit... The way Woodgate was talking, he's going to start and use him, and yeah. he's got to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? No matter what we think of him, he's got to. He's know. there, he's an asset which we need yeah. to use. We haven't well, got a well, squad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and if he there. is going to put the effort in like he did the other night, get him involved. But with Gestead, we've seen it before, he manages to get a start, and it fizzles it's out. It's always a, a false dawn with yeah. him. So. Yeah, yeah. Borough Rich said there that he's withdrawn from the Benin squad injured. So <laughs> I Again. don't know what he came to look back on. Me and Tony are going to be joined by Lee Bailey. We're going to look back on the Brian Robson years, as it's 25 years. Or it was in uh, August when Brian Robson took over as manager of the Borough. Um, so next week, get in touch with us. We're going to have a look at the uh, seven years of Brian Robson's manager, uh, managerial stint on Teesside. Lots of memories there. I'm sure we've got loads yeah. we can talk about and you, yeah. the viewers, next week. Get in touch with us about uh, Robbo's stint as Borough manager. We're going to have a nostalgic look back on his time at the Borough. Tony, as always, thanks for coming on Pleasure. tonight. Pleasure, enjoyed uh, it. Feel a bit better after that. No, it's like you say, it's good <laughs> therapy. <laughs> yeah, it is. <isn't> it? <laughs> we'll put our bill in later on. Uh, <laughs> thanks to all you watching out there tonight and all your contributions. Absolutely fantastic, as always. From us all here at the Longlands, have a good week. There's no match to ruin it at the weekend with the Borough. From me, James Hutchinson, and Tony Guest, good night and up the Borough. Up the Borough.